season. Um, well, thank you for being here today. I know uh, the day after Christmas having a, a church service is, I knew I, I knew it would be kind of a, a, a downside. We had 180 people back in here Christmas Eve, so that, uh, we got a lot of folks in here for our Christmas Eve service, uh, and then uh, well over 100 at, at the 10 p.m. service, but um, I know uh, Christmas Day is a busy day, and uh, a lot of folks are maybe traveling today, but uh, worship, worshiping an old mind with us this morning. We thank you for being here. I know it's a, a Sunday where we feel like we're, uh, hopefully we can just take a deep breath and, and soak in the, the season. Um, because God's worthy of our, our worship, and so we're going to give him our, our very best today. But just a few announcements as we as we begin. Um, if you ordered a, a poinsettia in honor or remembered someone, feel free to take those uh, today if you, would, if you would like. If not, you can leave them. Uh, we'll, we'll keep decorating them with them a few, a few weeks. 
Um, the church office is going to be closed in a few days this week. Take note of that. Uh, and we are still accepting some winter accessories, socks, mittens, gloves, and things like that. We'll be taking a delivery to Rowan Health and Ministries sometime in the next few weeks. Anything else going on? Y'all yeah. might be uh, in store for a different kind of service this morning. I don't know. I'm just getting the feeling of the Holy Spirit leading in a different direction, but uh, we'll see how it goes. But let's start with a, a word of prayer. Father, it's good to be in your house. Uh, we're thankful for the this season where we can pause and remember your son Jesus and his birth into this world and that you came and gave us the gift of, of your son but ultimately Lord keep us mindful of his purpose to, to come and show us how to live and how to love and ultimately to, to pay the price for our sins and go to the cross for us Lord we worship you today Lord we give you our, our very best so come Holy Spirit and lead us we pray in Jesus name Sam, as you're able, we're going to sing, uh, start with Go Tell It on the Mountain, but it's a, maybe a little different version of, of Go Tell It on the Mountain than you used to.
that God gave us. Jesus, that's right. And we're still celebrating him. Did you know that? Can we sing happy birthday to him? Let's sing happy birthday. And everybody else you can help me too. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. So as you go about this week, this is what I want you to remember, that God gave us the greatest gift, and it was Jesus, okay? So let's say a prayer, and then we'll go back to our seats. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, and thank you for your son, and help these kids to have a great week. In your sons have been great. So as I was singing, as I was singing uh, the song, I saw we had a, a special entrance in the back. It kind of distracted me a bit, but um, Baby Cooper has made his first trip to church. <laughs> Can we say Barely. <laughs> Where's he at? Is he hanging out over there? Or is he sleeping? I always like to say a little prayer for our babies when uh, their first trip to church is pretty deep, right? Let me pray for him. God, how sweet to, to hold the newborn baby. Feel the love and joy and pride that he gives. But Lord, we're thankful that for the calm assurance that this child can face on certain days because you live. Uh, but Lord, we thank you for little Cooper. We just pray your blessings on him. It's first Sunday here in church. Uh, watch over his family. Lord, may our church family uh, just continue to Nurture him all his days. Bless him. Bless his family in Jesus' name.
It's how we grow the church, folks. Let's, uh, let's keep that up. <laughs> I love welcoming new babies. Well, don't look at me. I'm done. <laughs> As we come to our, uh, our prayer time this morning, I invite your attention uh, to your prayer concerns in the, in the bulletin. Um, you can see several of those. Uh, I've got word from, from Doug this morning that, uh, that Martha Earnhardt uh, passed away in, in the Earnhardt family. So keep that family in your prayers. We've experienced a lot of, a lot of loss here, here lately. Uh, also keep Terry Holt in your prayers. Terry's uh, been... Uh, in the hospital, uh, got to come home yesterday, but uh, still has some some challenges ahead. Uh, so keep uh, keep Terry in your your prayers. Uh, are there any other prayer concerns to to lift? I know there are. Just phrases. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Precious God, you are so good to us, and we just come and, and say thank you. Lord, you are, you're so great, and Lord, it's, it's beyond our comprehension that, Jesus, that you would leave your, your heavenly throne and come to earth, to our, to the midst of our brokenness and pain, Lord, you, you came for us. We're thankful for that wonderful gift. Lord, your word tells us that you're able to do all things and nothing is too hard for, for you. And so, Lord, we come leaning on you and depending on you for all of our problems and struggles and perplexities. Lord, for all the, the sickness uh, that is uh, part of our, our existence and in our world. Lord, we just pray that you pour out your healing upon us. Pour out your peace on us. We thank you. We worship you. We acknowledge you today. We invite you to look inside of our hearts and minds. And Lord, we seek forgiveness for times that we failed you. We're thankful for your grace and for your mercy. Lord, as we close this year, we look back and, and think on all the times that you've been so faithful, Lord, that you've, uh, you've been with us through, through the ups and the downs, and Lord, we just come uh, just recommitting to you as we enter into a, a new year. We pray for our church today, Lord, that you would bind us together, that you would help build your church through us. May your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven through us, Lord. You put this church here a long time ago to be about your work, so help us to, to be you know, mindful and, and open to uh, your leadership, the leadership of your Holy Spirit. We pray for our country, for our leaders, for all those that put themselves in harm's way for our protection. Lord, I pray for the message that you've given with me this week. May it be effective and accomplish your purpose. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Dennis, I'm bringing a little bit up here. You want to maybe back me down a bit. So being uh, kind of a different Sunday in the life of the church, I, I thought maybe we would just keep it simple this morning. Uh, let's let's read the, the Christmas story uh, and then maybe talk about some of the, the real gifts of Christmas. I know a, a lot of our attention, a lot of our energy around Christmas is about getting gifts and giving gifts, which is great. I mean, we do that because the wise men brought gifts to, to Jesus. Uh, and, and so... We share gifts with, with one another. Um, but the gifts uh, that matter the most are not the ones that are under our trees. Uh, the gifts that matter the most uh, are the ones that, that God has given us in, in so many different ways. And so we're going to talk about those uh, real gifts of Christmas. Um, I might even open it up if, if y'all would like to share uh, maybe uh, you know how God has blessed you this past year or you know if you'd like to share a moment of Testimony. I feel I feel a nudge to, to do that this morning uh, to share how God has been blessing you or a, a gift uh, that God has shared with you this year. 
Let's read the Christmas story from, from Luke's Gospel, Luke chapter 2. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration that was taken while Quirinius was the governor of Syria. And all went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth and Galilee to Judea, the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And the angel of the Lord stood before them. And the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, and as it had been told them. It's the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. So I'll talk for just a moment about the, the real gifts of, of Christmas, the real gifts of, of Christmas. Jesus is, is the gift, a gift from God. The fact that God would, would leave his, his heavenly home, home, his heavenly throne, and, and come here. And what, what a gift. And Jesus came for, for many things. One of the, the things that Jesus came to, to give us, and the gift is the, the gift of the way. It, it, it's such a gift when, when you know someone who knows their directions, who knows how to get from one place to another, especially when you're lost. It's such a gift to have someone that can, that can show you the way. But that's exactly what Jesus did. He came to, to show you the way. He said, I am the way and the truth and the life. You want to know about God and, and who God is? Look at Jesus. Look at what he said. Look at what Jesus did. That's how we know God, through Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And when we look at Jesus' life, when we look at Jesus' teaching, it ought to shake us up a little bit. It ought to challenge us. Jesus and his early followers, uh, the, they were called followers of the way, the way, because they went a different path. They didn't go the, the path of the world. They went the path of God. The world tells us that we need to seek our, our own path, to seek our own glory. But Jesus calls us to seek God's path, to seek God's glory. The angels announced to the shepherds, To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord, the Lord. The word Lord means master, ruler. Those who follow Jesus, you're supposed to be, let him be the, the leader, the master of your life. And that's where you find joy, the joy that we've been searching for. Jesus said things like, Those who lose their life for my sake will find it means following Jesus, we have to, to lay down our own direction. We have to lay down our, our own direction and follow him to live the life that, that he would have us live. The only life that's worth, worth living. The gift of the way. Jesus gives us also the, the gift of love. Uh, it's, it's very simple. I think the deepest need in, in every human heart is to be, to be loved. We all want to be loved and, and to, to share love. And among the real gifts of Christmas is to acknowledge that Jesus came to, to love us and to show us God's love. Think about John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he 
gave his only son that whosoever should, believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. God sent his son, Emmanuel, God with us. It's an expression of God's love. You know, uh, I think I have learned more about the, the love of God. I've learned more about theology and about, you know, just about God from being a father more than going to seminary. The love I have as a, as a father for my children, that has helped me understand the unexplainable love of God, I think, more than anything else in this world. That God was willing to send his son into the world for us. Not just to, to send his son into the world to be lifted up and to be loved and to be, uh, you know, adored. But to send his son into the world with a purpose. Yes, he came in and born and placed in a, in a manger, but ultimately he was headed to the, to the cross. I don't know about you, but I couldn't do it. I couldn't send my child into the, the world for that. I, I, I couldn't do it. But God is love. God is love. That is how deep and how wide his love is for each one of us. It's hard to believe. It's hard to imagine. But that's one of the real gifts of Christmas, the unconditional love of God. And then the gift of, of forgiveness is something that we all need. The, the gift of forgiveness and, and new life. We all know folks that have gotten off track. Maybe you've, you've been one of those folks. We've all been off track from time to time. We've made that bad decisions and maybe found ourselves in, in dark places. But you know what? God always stands ready to forgive. Jesus spent most of his ministry with folks that were a little off track. And he was graceful and helped them get back on track. Mary and Joseph, they, they were told, you need to name this child Jesus. You know what the name Jesus means? God saves. And that's, that's not in the past tense. That's, that's in the present tense. Jesus still saves. So at Christmas we celebrate the birth of the one who brings mercy and forgiveness and new life to us sinners. And then the gift of, of resurrection. Resurrection. Everybody loves little baby Jesus. But as I said, he was meant for the cross. Christmas and Easter, they're they're inseparable. The one who came in Bethlehem ultimately went to the cross in Jerusalem. But it didn't end there. He was raised to life. And so we can be raised to life. We all walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We all walk through darkness here on this earth. We all know that our, our time is numbered. And so we will face a time when, when we, we wonder, where, where is our hope? Where is our, our light? And the gospel says our light can be found in Jesus because he conquered death. We too can conquer death. Jesus said, I am the resurrection. I am the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. That's when we have hope even in the midst of, of death. His promise is eternal life. These words, maybe, maybe his words don't change your situation, but maybe they change your perspective. As Christians, we, we grieve as those with hope. We grieve differently. When the, when the world loses and the world experiences death, they, they grieve differently. But we grieve as those with hope because we know death in this life is it's not the end for the Christian. So we thank God for the gift of, of resurrection. And we know that the, the promise is true that, that one day he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. These are just some of the, the real gifts of Christmas. The gift of, of Jesus Christ. Emmanuel, God with us. The gift of the way. The gift of Love, the gift of forgiveness and new life, and the gift of resurrection, the real gifts of Christmas.
Church, may we put our trust in, in Jesus, who was born of Mary and came to offer us hope, came to offer us grace and life. That's why we celebrate Christmas. In the end, light, light always has the last word. And Jesus is the light of the world. Now, I'm finished. But I told you I would give you an opportunity. Maybe you'd like to share for a moment. Anybody? Something that's one of those more relaxed services where we can... Anybody just feel like sharing a uh, word? I know some of you have been through some stuff this year. The Lord has, has been with you. Maybe you've experienced one of these, these gifts. Anybody? Don't be scared. We're all family. What are my box scared? I didn't think you were. <laughs> share some of their, their gifts, the real gifts uh, of Christmas this year.
Certainly. It's a gift, any time, especially you get you got your whole pew filled up there. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a gift. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'll, I'll kind of just echo what, what Dad said. It is, it's really been a blessing to have my family. Um, and I, I kind of have to pinch myself every once in a while. To, to, you know, that the Lord's blessed me with an opportunity to, to, to be here, uh, but also to be in a place where you know, I can fill my few up. Um, it's not just me and my wife and my kids. But I've got my grandparents, and sister, and uncles, and you know, all of them. share the, the gift testimony. I, I, I like to do that from time to time. Just to, uh, the Lord just doesn't speak through me. The Lord speaks through you. And just as much as he speaks through me. So uh, I certainly want to hear what the Lord speaking uh, to you and through you. But let's pray together. Once again, Lord, we just uh, we thank you for these, these gifts of Christmas, uh, the real gifts of Christmas, which we know aren't uh, things that we can put under a tree, but Lord, those that are around the tree, and Lord, those the things that you've given to us uh, throughout the year, and uh, Lord, continue to bless us with. Lord, we are, we are grateful, we are thankful, and we, just, we just love you. And Lord, help us to, to be mindful of that, that great love.
Let's stand as we sing our closing song. The song is called You're Here. Maybe you're familiar with it, maybe not, but uh, it's a really powerful song. Listen to the words of the
I can guarantee you one thing, we have season ends together. <laughs>